Oh, hey there. Hey, you. What up? Welcome to my channel. Welcome back. I'm Mariam. And in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing and slapping on the new Love Fest collection from Huda Beauty in collaboration with Kayali by Huda's sister, Mona. So in this collection, we have a lot of new products. We have a new eyeshadow palette that I'm going to be slapping on and creating this look that you see. I also have some new blushes to swatch and to test out, a new liner, and of course, a new fragrance from Kayali. So I'm going to be testing everything out. I'm going to be scrutinizing everything. I'm going to be conducting swatches, a look, and basically giving you the verdict at the end. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you for watching, for subscribing, for being awesome. I got nine more to say, but to get into this video, reviewing the new Huda Beauty collection, Love Fest, in collaboration with Mona's Kayali. Let's hit it. So obsessed. Of course, I'm on theme with the vibes, with the lavender shirt, with the lavender flower in the back. I'm here for all of this. Love Fest is a fun name for collection. I like the fact that it's in collaboration with Kayali, which is Huda's sister Mona's brand. And I gotta say, I've never really been a fragrance girl. I guess because most fragrances all smell the same to me, but Kayali is the first fragrance brand to actually make me start liking perfumes. Like I used to kind of like them back when I was in high school, just because it was like a thing to like. But then I totally grew out of love. I just like stopped wearing perfume altogether. And then just like recently in the last like few years, ever since Kayali came out, I started diving back into fragrances and perfumes. And I gotta say, I am obsessed. This is my favorite fragrance brand. I am not exaggerating. This is it. I wear their fragrances all the time. So I'm very excited for this. I know this video is about makeup, but I just had to get that out of my system. But anyway, in this PR package, outside of the Love Fest fragrance, which is new, we also have a booklet with everything. Here's Huda, here's Mona. And here we have the new eyeshadow palette, the Love Fest. So this is a limited edition Obsessions palette, nine pan palette. And this is what it looks like, ta-da! This is definitely reminding me of those warmer tones of 2017, 2018, before the pandemic time. But it has like a new take on those warm, rich colors with the inclusion of these swirl shades that are very, very metallic. Also the super chromatic shade. And this one looks also like a chromatic shade, but honestly, it's so hard for my eye to focus on this. It looks like glitter at first. So let me just go over all the deets that we have in this palette. So the Love Fest Obsessions eyeshadow palette is 29 US dollars. The Love Fest Burning Cherry fragrance is 85 US dollars because perfumes ain't cheap. And this is Eau de Parfum. So it is the highest concentration of fragrance that you can find, or one of the highest. I believe the perfume or the parfum is like the highest and then Eau de Parfum is like the second highest. Of course, we're gonna be smelling everything, but first I just wanna show you the products. This next thing I already snuck a little peek at. So in this collection, we also have two new blushes and these are called the Love Fest Cream Blush. So we have two shades, beautiful toasted tangerine and also a burning cherry. This is what they look like, but what really struck me is that the actual pan is holographic. I have never, ever, ever seen anything like this in the pan of a makeup product. This is so cool and so unique. If you look at it this way, it clearly says the word love, but if you shift it a little, it says something else. But when you tilt the mirror, you can actually read the message, share the love. I am obsessed. This is the cutest, the coolest, the dopest thing I've seen in makeup. And I literally do not want to swatch these because this is so different and just like so special that I want to keep these as just like a keepsake. Genius, 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 genius. Anyway, these are $39 each and these are exclusively available on hudabeauty.com only for the US market. Whereas everything else is available on hudabeauty.com, Sephora and any local Huda Beauty retailer. Last but not least, we have a new shade of the Life liner and it is actually in the shade very brown. So that's a nice addition to the line. I'm already a fan of the original liner. So having a 
brown version is always a plus. Brown liners I feel like are really trendy now and they're just like a lot more forgiving and a lot more wearable than black. A lot more people can pull it off. So I'm a fan. I also included a bunch of other things such as a mascara, such as the black life liner, such as a, such as a little travel case for the Kaoli fragrance. So now that we've looked at everything, I guess let's actually try all this out. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, <sighs> I guess I'm gonna swatch and dip into these blushes. They are so freaking pretty and I literally do not wanna ruin them. I'm just gonna like swipe on the bottom. I'm gonna literally try to avoid <laughs> the words here. So this is the shade Burning Cherry. I'm gonna swatch it here. Very, very pigmented and creamy, almost feels like a lipstick. And here is the shade Toasted Tangerine. Here they are side by side. And I gotta say, they both look very, very, very wearable to me. Definitely very creamy. So what I'm gonna do is probably apply one to each cheek. I got two cheeks, I got two shades, why not? So I'm gonna just dab the cherry shade right here. I actually have not set the face. I'm already wearing foundation, obviously, but I have not set my face with powder because I knew I was gonna test this product out. As you can see, it is very, very pigmented. Goes on like a bomb. Definitely has a little bit of a shiny finish, but it's not disrupting my makeup underneath. And overall, I will say it is looking pretty good. Picking up a little bit more color from my swatch and just building it up right here. Cute. Beautiful shade, definitely very, very flattering, but I still like it better in the pan. All right, on this other side, I'm gonna go ahead and apply the Toast of Tangerine. Ooh, this is a me kind of shade. 100% what I would wear in the summertime or at any time. I just love an unexpected pop of color. And these shades, because my skin is very warm, they tend to look very natural on me. Whereas a cooler blush always seems to pop against my skin tone. Yeah, I definitely like this shade more than this shade. This is kind of like an expected shade. It's very wearable, but this is just pretty. It looks natural, but yet it's still very, very punchy. So I like that. All right, I'm gonna set these quickly with a little bit of powder. And then I'm gonna move on to the eyeshadow palette. So I'm thinking I should probably go ahead and swatch these. I'm not gonna call in the swatch model for this. I'm just gonna swatch it on my arm. So this is the Love Fest Obsessions eyeshadow palette. Again, $29. Available online and in store from August 9th. I'm gonna start by swatching this shade here. Boom, next one. Next is the swirl shade. Wow, that's stunning. Next we've got the peach. Next we've got this chrome shade. Oh yeah, that's blinding. Look at that, wow. Next we have a lovely orange. Oh yeah, here's another multi-chrome shade. Absolutely stunning, wow. You can kind of see on my fingers how shifty they are. Next we have a medium brown. And last but not least, we have this beautiful peachy apricot shade. And here's all of them swatched. And I gotta say, this is a really, really beautiful color combo. And also looking at these colors, I can totally see the inspiration being a music festival and just sharing the love and all the good vibes. So I really, 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 really am feeling this. The swatches were also surprisingly really great. Sometimes with certain matte eyeshadows from Huda Beauty, the swatches aren't as consistent in these Obsessions palettes, but in this case, I feel like every single eyeshadow swatch the same in terms of quality. Not that swatches tell anything about the quality of an eyeshadow. I mainly conduct them for color purposes, but still, it's good to know. All right, so I'm applying my Fenty Beauty Primer all over my lids, blending and tapping it out with my finger. As always, I'm not sure what look I'm gonna go for, but I'm definitely gonna go for something inspired by these colors and just the messaging. Okay, good enough for now. So what I'm gonna do, I actually definitely want to utilize some of these chromatic shades. I feel like they were really, really promising. So I want to do something with them. So what I think I'm going to do first is actually take a small little brush, this Makeup by Mario E5. I'm going to dip into this very dark eyeshadow. It's like a chocolate brown, maybe like a coffee brown. I'm going to etch out a shape from the outer corner of the lid and crease along the crease and into the inner part of it. Kind of like that. Very, very messy, but this is just a map out. I'm gonna use the same brush to kind of blend it out a little bit, but not too much. And then same thing on the other eye. Well, this is definitely sticking to the primer. There's no fallout. This first shade is really nice. It's very dark, it's very consistent. There's no gaps, looking really good. All right, so then I'm gonna take the edge of that brush and just soften those edges ever so slightly. 
and just continuously blending. Basically, I'm going for like a smaller smoky. So I'm keeping it very close to my crease. I don't want the smoke to go all the way up to my brow. I really want it to be contained. So I'm gonna take a smaller brush, something like this. I'm gonna dip back into the same shade. And with this shade, I'm going to trace out a line, maybe like two or three millimeters above my natural crease, which is still very, very low and still very much contained. So I'm just gonna kind of like intensify that shape and just place that right in inside the smoke, like that. And then same thing on the other eye. The crease on this eye, for some reason is even lower than on the other eye. They're totally uneven. So I'm placing this one slightly higher to make them look more even, just like that. And then I'm gonna go back with the first brush and I'm just gonna sloppily go over that. All right, so now that I have that basic shape, I'm gonna start adding more colors to it. I'm gonna take a fluffy brush. This one is from Makeup Geek and I'm gonna grab this pale peachy shade. Not too much though. I'm gonna add that right into that smoke kind of like cleaning up that shape, but also just adding a little bit more color. Keeping that right above that fold, but not really being too precise because I'm gonna cover everything underneath the fold anyway. So I'm just blending and adding a little bit of color at a time because this one does seem to be pretty pigmented. There we go, it's looking good. And then once more going back with the brown, not really adding too much color into it. Just kind of blending whatever's remaining on the brush, making sure that the smoky is still contained. Okay, I haven't done this look in a minute. I'm gonna take a stiffer brush, Precision Crease from Motives, dip into this beautiful peachy shade, and kind of like slap that in between. This will add a little bit of pinkiness in between the peach and the brown, and it'll just make everything look a little bit more sunsetty. You see that? It'll just serve as a good transition. There we go. Still trying to keep it contained. I'm gonna go back with a fluffy brush and just contain that smoke, blend and blur. So now I'm gonna go in with the fun colors. I am thinking I will do both. So I'm gonna start out with the lighter shade, this one. I'm gonna slap that to the inner portion of my lid and up to that crease. And kind of like to the center, overlapping a little bit. These shades I do like to apply with my finger. They're just a little bit easier to control that way as opposed to with the brush. And just kind of like stretch them over the lid like that. And then for the very inner corner, I'm just gonna take a tiny brush and move that in to make sure there's no gaps. There we go, beautiful. And then I'm gonna grab the darker purple, this one. I'm gonna slap that to the outer portion of the lid, overlapping with the center. I'm just creating dimension and sparkle and shine like that. Oh yeah, boom. This is looking very fun for me, but also very reminiscent of makeup that I used to do a few years ago. I'm telling you, these colors are very reminiscent of 2017. So I can't help but create a 2017-esque look with these colors. But not to worry, I'm gonna switch it up, I'm gonna change it up, I'm gonna make it current. So I'm gonna grab the Life Liner, quick and easy, in very brown. First, I'm gonna remove a cat hair from my eye. And then I'm gonna flick out the inner corner wing downwards like that. I'm gonna create the inner corner wing and connect it to the middle of the bottom lash line, just like that. I'm gonna wing out the outer portion like that. I'm gonna line the top lash line ever so slightly and connect that to the wing. And then I'm gonna take this wing back. That makes me feel accomplished. Now, let me accomplish that on the other side. Flicking it in, stretching it back, connecting. Good enough. Flicking out the outer wing using short strokes here because this liner is very, very tiny and it is very precise. Lining just the top of the lash line, bring it back, and then creating that negative space wing, but I do have to work this liner a little bit because although I like this liner, it does dry out very quickly because this is a bristle tip. And bristle tips generally don't work very well on top of super metallic shadow. I think that looks pretty decent. I'm happy with my eye look looking a little bit more current than before. One thing I do wish is for this eyeshadow to have one super bright, perhaps a metallic or chromey shade for the inner corner or for the brow bone. Something a little bit lighter and something a little bit more reflective as opposed to colorful, like a purple. Perhaps like a gold or pink shift, like an oyster shell shift. That would be really nice in this palette, I think. But that's just me and that's just my suggestion. Let's move on to finishing up this look. Top and bottom. I'm gonna use this Makeup Forever mascara. Noticing there's a little bit of sticky fallout on this side of the face from the two chrome shadows. 
not so much on this side of the face so I'm not sure if it was my application or what it was but there's definitely a lot of blue and pink sparkles underneath my eye on this side not really on this one I'm gonna add the second step of this mascara just like that I'm actually thinking I could use some falsies for this look just because it will look a lot better and more put together. So I am going to grab these uh, Kiss Lash Couture Masterpiece in the style Hot Couture. This is a very, very dramatic style, but I'm gonna cut it in half. I'm gonna use the inner part of the lash that I cut. So both inner portions, the ones that taper in. I'm gonna use those as half lashes. I'm just gonna place them on the outer third of my eye. I actually have the Huda Beauty Lash Glue and that is what I'm gonna use. Once the lash glue has dried a little, usually like 30 seconds or so for me, I'm gonna slap that on right there. I like it, sultry, very, very sultry. All right, so while the lash glue dries, I'm gonna do my lips and the rest of my face, which I don't really have much left. So for lips, kinda wanna do something a little bit neutral. Not too crazy. So I'm thinking this Kaja Beauty Love Swipe Gloss, which doesn't really feel like a gloss. It actually feels more like a mousse. But I think this is quite appropriate. This is pretty. Just like a hint of cool to work with the eyes. Though if I were to match this blush shade, I would probably go for a different lip shade. But in this instance, I was looking at myself from this side where I wore the cherry blush as opposed to the tangerine. So I feel like with this side, it works a little bit better. Anyway, final thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna spray myself with this Kaoli New Scent, Love Fest Burning Cherry, number 48. And let me just go ahead and tell you what the notes are. We've got Burning Cherry, Raspberry, Praline, Palo Santo, Guajac Wood, and we've got Patchouli. So the key notes, I'm still not sure what top, middle, and dry means, but the top key notes will be bergamot, raspberry, and black cherry. Middle notes will be rose damaskina essence, jasmine sambac, heliotrope, and praline. And the dry key notes will be palo santo, guajac wood, patchouli prisma, peru balsam, tonka beans, absolute vetiver, haiti essence, and ambretolid. Hmm. Fun fact, number 48 indicates the number of formula modifications that went into creating this addictive juice. Okay, let's test it. Oh yeah, I am terrible at describing fragrances. At the top, I am smelling something that feels very luxurious. I'm not sure which one of these ingredients it is, but that's the one that speaks first to me. It just feels like an upscale scent that you would wear at night, perhaps to an event, perhaps when you are dressed up wearing full glam, not a t-shirt. I am sensing that cherry scent very strongly. It's also slightly reminding me of that cough syrup medicine scent. Yes, I said it, but Wait for it, I actually don't mean that in a negative way. I am someone who actually likes that scent. So when something reminds me of it, it's reminiscent of a good feeling, <laughs> perhaps staying at home and resting. Something about this combination of scents makes me feel a little bit nostalgic, but it also makes me feel dressed up and upscale at the same time. So I really like it at first scent. I'm gonna try to work on my perfume vocabulary if you guys are interested in having me review perhaps more scents, perhaps not here on YouTube, maybe on TikTok or maybe on Instagram Reels or maybe even on shorts, I don't know. But I definitely need to find the right lingo and just like the right descriptive words to be able to describe what it is that I'm smelling. Did you just say my makeup is old school? Well, yeah, I mean, not old in a bad way, but just old school. Like, like how old? 2000. Then 18, 19? That's what I said. Thank you. <laughs> Pre-COVID. Back when we were actually doing glam. All right, so now that we've heard that commentary, I guess it's time for me to judge my makeup and judge this new collection from Huda Beauty X Kaoli. I 100% see the 2018, 2019 reference that he just made. I totally thought the same when I opened up the palette. I thought that the colors in this Love Fest Obsessions palette were very reminiscent of those glam YouTube makeup days from a few years ago. Definitely very warm, definitely very inviting. This is definitely my comfort zone. I feel comfortable with these colors, though I'm not necessarily reaching for them so much now. But this look, I really do like. I did try to add a modern twist with the eyeliner, with like a little bit of the siren eye and just like a graphic line here and there. But still, seeing those colors definitely makes me wanna create a smoky sunset eye. And that's just like what naturally 
direct my vision. These colors are for sure smoky eye friendly, especially if you love a warm smoky eye. Overall, I really like this palette. I feel like it swatched very well. All the eyeshadows performed great. They were really easy to blend, really easy to apply. They stuck to the primer and weren't patchy, so I like the quality of this eyeshadow palette. I like the color story. Yes, it is reminiscent. It is a bit of a throwback color story, but there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we need to look back in order to look forward, and I'm here for that. Moving on to the blushes. The packaging and just like the pan with the words, with the hologram, this was genius. I really loved it. I also like the product. I thought the tangerine blush was a little bit more my speed than the cherry, but definitely both of these colors are very wearable. They were very easy to apply on. Actually, I think this would make a really, really great gift. It just feels special. The packaging feels really cool. It feels fun. It feels exciting. And I can see a lot of people liking this. Love the perfume. I could actually call myself a collector of Kaoli perfumes. Well, first of all, because I get them in PR. Thank you, Mona, and thank you, Huda and team, for sending them to me. And thank you for making me fall in love with scents once again. This is another scent that I will absolutely definitely reach for. I love all of Kaoli's scents, and I can't wait to wear this one and mix them match it with some of my other faves. I guess that kind of brings me to the end of this video. Overall, I definitely feel that the love is there in this Love Fest collection. I love the fact that it's a collaboration between two sisters. Love the messaging behind it. The products are fun, they're wearable, and they're positive. So I'm here for that, and I hope you guys are too. So with that said, I am gonna zoom on out. So I'm gonna invite you to check out more of my videos over here. Click on them, and I will see you in one of my next videos. Peace out, and I'm out.